All right, guys, we're going to um, do a uh, a really cool effect, which is called the um, which is called the interweaving photo strips or the basket weave, like I like to call it. Um, we're going to use a run into a couple tools, different things. We're going to do the crop tool and also the grid, um, showing a grid in uh, Photoshop that kind of helps with uh, shapes and things like that with alignment, how to uh, create a grid and also how to change it uh, in the preferences. Um, we'll show you how to also show you how to um, change the ratio in the crop tool. Um, but this is a really interesting photo effect. Um, and we're going to take an image and turn it into a series of interweaving strips. We'll be using a few layers and layer masks in the tutorial, as well as a couple of clipping masks and layer style. Um, and it'll look really cool when we're done. I picked um, this famous image of obviously the... Oops, I'm already having... Um, I picked this uh, famous image from the birth of man. So um, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to unlock the layer. I always like to unlock that layer like that. Um, and this effect looks better as a square. So I'm going to use the crop tool. And the crop tool is the fifth tool down. So you're going to go ahead and click on that crop tool. Um, and you'll see at the options bar at the top, there's a lot of little blank areas, little double arrows, things like that. But if you go to the drop down menu, you can actually um, uh, set how you want your crop to work or you can pick their ratios and they have square eight by 10, five by seven. We're gonna use square today. Um, and we can create a new crop preset also, uh, like you're, if you're doing a series of photographs and they're all the same size and you want them all cropped the same way, you can set that ratio and you can just hit the crop button and select that ratio and it will continue to do it um, for every picture and it makes uh, saves a lot of time. But we're gonna pick square right now and you can go ahead and move um, you know, how you want it to look. And I'm just going to pick it right in here, right in the middle, looks the best. And I'm going to hit that check button. So right there, I have that, my image, my square image, um, ready to go. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this twice because we need to create the horizontal strips and the vertical strips. So I'm going to hit control J and J, and I will have renamed this uh, vertical vertical strips and then I'm going to do this one as horizontal <laughs> then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that background uh, with black okay um, if it is um, if your foreground color is already black, then you can just hit Control Delete and Invert Control I, or you can fill it with black. Okay, so you should have three layers: one vertical, one horizontal, and one black. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to introduce you to a grid. Now, uh, the grid um, helps with alignment and things like that. And what to be able to, to, in order to be able to see it, we're just going to hit view and show, and you're going to go to grid. And there are the um, the grids right there. Now, um, there's a couple ways you can do. Um, you can change the way that looks. Maybe if uh, some of you might not be able to see it, mine's already preset for this color. So if you hit Control or Command K, Control K on the Mac or on the uh, PC, Command on the Mac, you can go to the preferences and you can change all the interface workspace. But I'm going to go ahead and go to Grids, Guides, and Slices, um, and I'm going to. You can see right here where it says Grid. We can custom the grid. Make sure that um, it's on custom that it's line and you can pick the color that you want right here on the right um, you want a grid line every 15 millimeters or maybe you can do it um, every 15 inches but you don't want that maybe every one pixel maybe every 25 pixels 
or maybe every 30 pixels. So you depend, depending on your image, and subdivision should be one, and you just hit OK. And then there you can see my grids um, line that's going to be used to make my stripes, OK? So you should have a grid line like this, depending on the color that you selected for that particular, for your, um, your custom color. All right, once we've created our grid, we're going to go ahead and make our vertical and horizontal stripes. Okay, so to do this, we're going to select on the horizontal stripes, but then we're also going to hide those verticals, that top layer. And to do that, we're going to use our um, rectangle marquee. We're going to select uh, three stripes at this point and then skip one. So I'm going to go ahead and click down and over, select three, release, and then I'm going to hold shift so I can create another selection. But you got to keep that shift button hold down, held down, otherwise it won't work. Then I'm going to skip a row, and I'm going to go over, down three, and then release. And then I'm going to go skip one again, go over, and down three, release, skip one, go over, down three, skip one, go over, down three, skip one, and then go over and down and it's okay if you didn't get the same amount there. It's not a real problem. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. With all our horizontal stripes selections in place, click on the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers palette to add a layer mask to the horizontal stripes. So we're going to go ahead and add a layer mask. Okay. Photoshop adds a mask to the layer and uses the selections we've created to determine which parts of the layer will remain visible and which parts will become hidden from view. The areas that were inside our horizontal selection remain visible, while the areas that were in the grid columns that separate our selections disappear, revealing the black filled layer underneath. Okay. Now I'm going to hide my... Um, Now I'm going to unhide, excuse me, unhide my um, my top layer, which is my um, vertical stripes. And I'm going to start to create my vertical stripes. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to drag down and go three over, then hold the shift button, skip a column, and go three over, let go, skip a row, Go down three column, skip a row, select three columns, skip a row, select three columns, skip a row, and we're going to select the last one there and release. And once we've done that, we're going to add a layer mask on that layer. Photoshop adds a layer mask to layer just like it did before. It uses our selections to determine which areas of the layer remain visible, which will disappear. Now you can see where the masks intersect are where those perfect black squares are. So you should have something that looks like this. You should have three layers, vertical stripes and horizontal stripes that create those squares because that is where they intersect through the mask. It's a little hard to comprehend, but it um, you'll eventually catch on, okay? So you can see that if I do, if I hide the top layers, the stripes go vertical or horizontal and vice versa, okay? At this point now, we can actually, at this point, we can actually get rid of the grid. So I'm going to go to view and show and get rid of that grid, okay? Um, now, Now we have our vertical and horizontal strips, but all it really looks like at the moment is that we have a bunch of black squares covering our image. We need to create the illusion that the stripes are weaving above and below each other. To do that, we need to select the areas where the vertical and horizontal strips intersect. Before we do that, though, um, we have to turn off the grid, which we did, uh, and since we don't, no longer need it, 
then hold down control and click directly on the horizontal strips layer. So I'm gonna hold control and click on the horizontal strips layer. So it will make a selection of that mask. Okay, and you can see that it has made a selection of that mask. Then hold down shift control and alt or shift command and option on your Mac. So on your PC, hold shift control alt, control alt, and then you're going to click on the vertical stripes. And what you can see what happened is it made a selection of those intersections where they would weave together, okay? This will do two things. One, it will load the vertical selections back into the image, and two, it will tell Photoshop to keep the selection around only the areas where horizontal and vertical selections intersect. Everything else becomes deselected, okay? Then we're gonna save the selection because just like everything else, we can save it. So we're gonna go up to select and save selection. Where did it go? There it is. And we're gonna call it, um, we're gonna call it squares. S-Q-U-A-R-E-S. We're going to hit OK. Now, with your rectangle marquee tool still activated, hold down Alt on in the Windows or Option on a Mac and drag a selection around every other square selection. This will deselect the selections you drag around. Continue drag around every other square selection to deselect it until it only, only half the original squares are appearing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, we're going to hold down Alt on Mac Alt on Windows and Option on Mac. And I'm going to use this. And what that does is it makes a negative selection. So I'm going to select every other square to deselect. So I unselected this one, didn't left this one unselected. And then we're going to do opposite. So if that one, there we go here. So it should be every other one all the way down to the bottom. This could take a few moments. Every other square, just like this. Still hold alt, alt, alternate on your PC or option on your Mac. Just like that. And you can let go. Now you can see what happened is I have every other square is selected. We're going to click on the horizontal strips and we're going to hit Command J or Control J. Command in a Mac, Control on a PC. You can see what happened is that I, it created, and if I hide these, it created those little squares of intersection. Okay. Um, and it's added between it. With the new layer selected, go up to layer menu and choose click, create a clipping mask. So we're going to add a clipping mask to this. So it clips just to the horizontal. So I'm going to go right click and hit create a clipping mask. And you can see it is created, it is clipping onto just the horizontal strips. Next, we're gonna bring back that selection and we're gonna do the same thing for the vertical stripes, but the opposite squares. So we're gonna go to select, load selection. We're gonna go, oop, excuse me. We're gonna go select, load selection. And we're gonna pick squares under the channel. You're gonna hit okay and then there they are now. Remember, we did we selected the uh, deselected the first one last time. So this time we're going to skip that one, and we're going to hold Alt, and we're going to select the opposite ones, like that. So now we have the opposite square selected than we did before. Same thing we're going to do. Okay, we're going to do uh, Control J on the Windows or Command J on the Mac, Control J, and we're going to duplicate it and it goes above the vertical stripes. Just as we did before, we're gonna create a clipping mask on layer two, create a clipping mask so that it clips on top of the vertical stripes. So you should have 
five layers, a background black layer, horizontal stripes, the clipped layer one clipped onto the horizontal stripes, vertical stripes, layer two clipped onto vertical stripes. So we're going to go to FX and this picks up our color picker. So we're going to select reset to default and we're going to make sure that we pick um, black is our color. Okay. And we also need to change I'm going to pick that to normal and we're going to change the, um, we're going to lower the opacity to about 60. So the shadow isn't quite as dark. Finally, in the elements part, we're going to raise the size value to about 40. I'm going to switch this to 40. There we go. Hey, so you can already begin to see a little bit of dimension in that right there. Oh, I guess it's on multiply. Okay. So we hit okay. You might need to adjust the size uh, of the, um, the elements depending on the size of your image. Okay. So we're going to, next, we're going to copy and paste that layer style onto layer one. So we're going to right click on that, copy layer style, right click, paste layer style. And you can already see that woven effect is already starting to come to life. And there you have it. That is the woven effect in Photoshop. Um, the tricky part is really getting those effects and those clipping masks and the masks of the stripes. I hope you guys enjoyed it.